been tough against some of the upper echelon teams in the SAC 8 in 1988. Yeah, they come in tonight's game with a three and six overall record with wins over Carson Newman and Gardner Webb, two opponents that give Lenore Ryan fits. Newberry, the only thing left for them to do during the season is uh, be the spoiler for tonight in an LR's game. Well, that's certainly their game plan tonight. Try to spoil the Lenore Ryan hopes of at least a co-championship in the SAC 8 for 1988. We'll be back with the kickoff of tonight's game when we come back here at Setzler Field in Newberry, South Carolina. You're watching Lenore Ryan football on Catawba Valley Cable TV. The first name in copiers probably isn't the copier name you think of first. But it's a name that links speed and performance with uncompromising reliability and makes innovative technology simple to use. For meeting the needs of every size business, business relies on the most popular copiers in America. From personal to high-performance copiers, the choice is Canon. See your authorized Canon dealer. Deal office equipment. Hendrick Motors, your Carolina import showplace, would like for you to spend a few minutes with a legend in its own time. It's the Mercedes-Benz 560 SL. Be it an open roadster or a closed coupe, it's a powerful statement of an automobile's classic value. This magnificent automobile awaits your immediate inspection and a test drive. Lease a new Mercedes-Benz 560 SL for $6.89 a month at Hendrick Motors. And coming soon, look for their used car showroom on LR Boulevard, Hickory. The years go by, the family grows, and things change almost before you know it. That's why the State Farm Family Insurance Checkup is there, to help you keep up with all those changes. A State Farm agent will show you just where you stand on your life, health, home, and car insurance. The advice is free, and the decisions are yours. Your State Farm agents in Hickory are William S. Barkley, 4th Street Southwest, Ron H. Whaley on Highway 127 North, and Bobby Phillips on Springs Road. What's located near Hickory's three major highways has 3,000 square feet of meeting and banquet space and provides dining and entertainment nightly. There's no need to guess. When it comes to the area's most complete entertainment and business facility, it has to be Hickory's Ramada Inn. 108 guest accommodations are just the start of what we have to offer. The Ramada Inn's banquet rooms can satisfy three or 300, plus live entertainment nightly at Khaki's Lounge. So don't guess. Call on the professionals at Ramada Inn, your business and entertainment connection. Under a cloudy, crisp autumn evening here in Newberry, South Carolina, Richie Mather gets ready to kick off for Lenore Ryan. Reggie Epps and Kerry Suber are deep for the Indians of Newberry College, and this clash between these two Lutheran institutions is underway. At the eight yard line, it's gonna be picked up by uh, Epps, and he's making a return over the 20, out to about the 24 yard line, and it'll be first down uh, for Newberry there, and Juju, you set the offense for them. They'll come out with quarterback Ron Blakely, number 10, 6'1", 190, and a junior transfer from Wofford a couple of years ago. The man to watch in the running back, Kevin Acker, 5'10", 192, and a freshman. He has been the big play guy so far this year. They'll come out in two-back situation. Jeff, they run to veer, split backs, a lot of dives. They want to control the line of scrimmage. Huddy clink scales the other back behind the quarterback with Acker as they go first down to the 24-yard line, and this is... Uh, the first running play and maybe a yard on the play, if anything. Kevin Acker, the ball carrier, as uh, Blakely hands off to him, it'll be a gain of a yard. Call it second down and nine at the 26-yard line of the Indians. Just underway here at Setzler Field in Newberry, South Carolina this evening. A good group of Lenorine followers has joined us here this evening for the ball game. And, of course, you would expect on Parrots Night here at Newberry College, a lot of the parents have uh, arrived here for the Newberry side as well. As uh, we get ready to go on second and nine, Blakeney going to option, gives it straight ahead and diving for some yardage is Clink Scales. He gets over the 30 out to about the 32 yard line. Not quite enough what the Indians need for a first down. It's gonna bring up third down and uh, about three yards to go for Newberry. Across the front line center, Craig Cleveland. Guards is Joe Vaughn, Benji Mosley, Vel Phelps, and Jesse Schweiers is the, are the tackles. And Gary Green, the tight end, Jeff, they are strong up front. They have three seniors and a junior and a freshman tight end. And Green, again, they want to control the football, keep it away from the Bear offense. Acker is tripped up short of the 35-yard line. It's going to be close to what they need for a first down. He came into the game ranked seventh in the sack eight in rushing in the 1988 season. 
with uh, accumulation of a uh, little over 600 yards. It is enough for a Newberry first down. So the Indians have a first down at the 35 yard line. The Bear defense uh, against Newberry, uh, looking at the Bear rushing defense, is ranked sixth in the conference, but Newberry's rushing offense is ranked only seventh in the conference. So it's going to be interesting to see how well Newberry runs the football tonight against the Bears. We'll set that defense for you in a moment. Blakeney at the 35 yard line with a pair of running backs behind him. On first down, going to give it to Clink Scales, and the Bears stuff him right at the line of scrimmage. He might have got a yard, no more than that. Good defensive effort by the entire Bear defensive front that time. Todd Hegler, Jerry Allen, Cohe, and a couple of others in on the tackle for Lenore Ryan. Setting that secondary for the Bears, Marcus Wall will be at safety, Scott Walker at corner. Then it's Ike Oglesby playing also the free safety, Terrence Mungro in there as well. Linebackers will be Charlie Wallace and Toby Bratton. Defensive ends, Mike Cohe, or excuse me, Foster and Hagler. Tackles, Jerry Allen and Mike Cohe. Second and nine at the 36-yard line. Blakeney calling signals. is going to turn around and now runs the quarterback. Uh, going to keep the ball himself. He comes over the 40-yard uh, line out to about the 42-yard line. I don't know if that was a design play or he uh, turned around and saw no one to hand it off to. He, either way, he comes up with yardage for the Indians. and pitches it away from the man right in front of John Terry on the bench. It goes out of bounds over there. Newberry will retain possession, but it's a loss of yardage back to the 40-yard line, and the Indians are going to have to punt it away. Eric Boston in there also at tackle tonight. And again, quarterback Blakely, we saw him, Jeff, a couple of years ago playing for Wofford. He is a scrambling-type quarterback, not especially a good thrower, but supposed to be good on the option. His running back stopped that time, and he threw it. There was nobody there. Rolled out of bounds. Kevin Black, the punter for Newberry, gets off a high floating kick that's going to be caught on the dead run by Lenore Ryan Scott Walker. Walker picks it at about the 32, and Newberry covers him at about the 34-yard line. And Lenore Ryan's going to have uh, possession for the first time tonight at their own 34-yard line. Scott Walker coming into the game, one of the best in kickoff returns and punt returns. He was second in the conference, eight yards of return, Jeff. And we heard Newberry's coach before the game talking on the radio side that he was saying that that's one thing they're going to guard against. The Bears hurt Newberry last year on the special teams, returning a kick and a punt for long yardage. Sanders and Hatley are the wide receivers. Greer and Crawford behind Lauren Dean as the Bears start at their own 34. And this is Walter Greer with a big hole, 35-40. Out to about the 42-yard line. A fine start for the Bears on offense as they trap on the line of scrimmage and Greer comes out for good yardage all the way out to the 42-yard line. It'll be second and short for the Bears. Offensively for Lenore Ryan as they rush the football this year. Again, we've mentioned all throughout the season, top five running backs for the Bears have all averaged over five yards a carry. That time, coming into the game, Greer with 200 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Three wideouts on second and three for Lenore Ryan. Lauren Dean throwing to the sideline, going to be caught. First down and more. Racing into the Newberry territory for a first down for Lenore Ryan is Kenny Jones. He's got a first down at the Newberry 38-yard line. Just throw it to the sideline and let him run with it, and he got good yardage for the Bears at that point, and that's the first first down of the evening for Lenore Ryan. There's the balance we talked about all year. They go with the trap up inside, get the defense looking inside, then come with the quick hits. The, the wide receiver Jones on the season now. The freshman second on the team in receptions, tied with Rex Harrison with 30. Sanders to the short side, Hatley to the wide side as they're going to pitch it back to Crawford. Here he comes to the right. Newberry covers it very well. Defensive effort for Newberry it was Reggie Dees, the defensive tackle that pursued him and tackled him at the Newberry 39-yard line. It'll be second and 10. Two men to watch for Newberry tonight on defense. They, despite having some problems on defense, they have two outstanding players. Number 74, the nose, check that, the defensive tackle, Chris Chrisley, a senior. And you mentioned, Jeff, the other, Dees, also a senior. They anchor that front line for Newberry. Four receivers for Lauren Dean as he backs out of there on uh, second and long. Tommy with time over the middle. Got to be caught. 
Not enough for the first down at about the 31 yard line. It was Mark Sanders that made the reception for Lenore Rye. It'll bring up a third down at about three yards to go for the Bears. Mark it at the Newberry 31 yard line. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. That was Sanders 43rd reception on the season. We mentioned not in there tonight. Rex Harrison tight end knee injury. He'll not suit up tonight. Kevin Gilmore number 83 the freshman is in there tonight. He is out of Lakeland Florida. Damon and Sanders are the wideouts this time for the Bears as they go on third and three at the Newberry 31. They're going to pitch it to Crawford. Got good blocking 30. Cuts back 25 and now out of bounds at about the 24 yard line and a first down for the Bears. Give some credit that time to Mark Sanders who stayed with the cornerback out there and just stayed with his man and you saw James cut right off of Mark's block. He didn't knock anybody down Jeff but it was a shield block and James just picked his way and that's a play we've seen all year. The weak side sweep back to the short side of the field and another third down conversion. Clock stopped with 9.03 because he ran out of bounds and now they'll start it when the ball snapped. A pair of wide receivers to the left side for Lauren Dean at the Newberry 24 yard line. This is Crawford sweeping left. He's got some running room, gets down inside the, the 25 to about the 21 yard line. Bear offensive line doing a good job here in the first possession for Lenore Ryan. As you're gonna look at uh, second down and about seven yards to go for Lenore Ryan from the 22, they'll mark it. Jeff, we mentioned Newberry's offense has given up defense 2,058 yards rushing this year. That's the worst in the sack eight. Three receivers for the Bears, and Lauren Dean wants to throw to the sideline. This is Kenny Jones. He's inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line, and the Bears are going to have first down and 10 yards to go from just outside the 10 at the 11. You saw it from up here. Newberry had eight guys on the line of scrimmage. They were coming with the blitz and you can't guard the bare wide receivers with single coverage. Jones just went down about six yards and curled in, and Tommy with picture-perfect protection drilled it in for the first down. Well, Norrine started at their own 34-yard uh, line. They now have it first and 10, just outside the Newberry 10-yard line at the 11th. First and 10 for the Bears. They can get a first down before they get the touchdown. Greer up the middle, tripped up and dropped at the line of scrimmage. He might have got a couple of yards to the nine, it was Chris Chrisley, their fine nose guard, that tripped him up, and that's the name we'll be calling a lot tonight for the Indians. Chrisley, a uh, big one at uh, 6'3", 265 pounds, and he is a senior. Second down and eight yards to go from the nine-yard line. Lauren Dean looks over the Indian defense now. Studies the situation, taking a long time to get the playoff, and now they're going to pitch it to Crawford. Cuts it against the grain and gets it down to about the six-yard line. As the yardage in deep in Newberry territory beginning to stiffen just a little bit now. Newberry's been really playing tough, Jeff, along the front line. They have moved their linebackers and their strong safety up closer to the line of scrimmage. The Bears want to try to run the corners. They were successful last week, and again, Rex Harrison not in there. He's a little bit better blocker than Kevin Gilmore, but look, Kenny Jones, number six, split way out. They're going to go for him, Jeff, maybe across the middle. Greer, the only setback behind Lauren Dean on third down and six from the seven. Tommy under pressure, gets it underway, and it's incomplete in the end zone for Jones. He was trying to come across the middle. That's an old wide receiver trick. You split way out to the 10-yard line. You saw it there, and all he did was drive five yards and then go to the post, but good coverage there by the Indians. So the Bears will try a field goal. and It'll be spotted at the 15-yard line, so it'll be a 25-yard attempt for Richie Mallard. Mackie Pritchard will hold. Actually, it's spotted at the 14-yard line. Waiting on the snap. It's down. The kick's on its way. And Lenore Ryan has drawn first blood on a 24-yard field goal. 6.51 to go in the first quarter. Timeout on the field. This is Lenore Ryan College Cable Sports Network. Today's smaller, higher revving engines can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castrol. Tests show Castrol suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castrol, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol GTX oil, featured now at discount prices at WW Auto Parts in Longview.
Pontiac excitement begins with Bumgarner Pontiac in Hickory. If your phone is always tied up, call waiting is the answer to never missing out on an important call at home. And if you want those important calls to track you down, call forwarding does the trick. And for all those times when you don't have time, speed calling is the fastest way to get in touch. For more flexibility from your phone, ask your Centel representative about custom calling. From Centel, where people connect. Around the world in 30 minutes, this is Headline News. For the fastest up-to-the-minute news on television, you know you can trust Headline News. And for the complete local picture, watch David Burridge and Catawba Valley Headline News. All the news at any time of the day or night on Catawba Valley Cable TV, Channel 4. Why turn anywhere else? Get always on time news updates, business briefs, and sports scores on Headline News. And the local news on Catawba Valley Headline News. On Cable TV, Channel 4. Kenny Suber and Reggie Epps are deep. This was muffed by Epps. He picks it up at the six, back to the 15. The Bears break, breaks the tackle there, 20, 25, out to about the 27 or 28 yard line before Lenore Ryan runs him out into to the Newberry sideline over here. And he was lucky to get that much yardage after muffing the kickoff. He did break a tackle up inside as Epps did and Scotty Walker knocked him out of bounds and Jeff that 10 play drive by the Bears getting them on the board first. The North Ryans played four road games this year and they've scored first in all four games, so that's a good sign. Blakeney brings them up to the line of scrimmage at the 28 yard line. The Indians are now trailing three nothing following the field goal. And they're gonna give it to Clink Scales or check that, that's Acker with the ball and he's got good yardage, leaps over the line of scrimmage, 35 out to the 40 and a first down for the Indians on their first run from scrimmage. Little off tackle play and they pulled a guard that time and a good block there and the Bear linebacker is not around on that play. And Acker just jumped over the pile, picked up the first down. So the Indians coming back, changing a little bit, getting out of that dive, 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 and they just went up the middle again, but good yardage. Acker been averaging just under four yards a carry on the season. And he got 10, 11 that time and a first down for the Indians. Blakely sends a man in motion. And now got to give it uh, for another running play. And this is uh, Acker once again. And uh, he's over the 45, out to the 46-yard line. Newberry doing a fine job here this evening running the football in their this front, possession. Their front line, Jesse Schweers, number 67, and Benji Mosley. A couple of good blocks, and Eric Boston and a couple of the Bear defensive tackles that time pushed off the football. Again, the Bears are without Ojar Vassar. Defensive tackle and linebacker Bob Lofton, but he is dressed, Jeff. He could play. So the Indians have second down and four yards to go. They send a man in motion. That's Dave Weber going to the wide side of the field, the right side. They're going to run back to the short side. Acker going to be breaking a tackle, has the first down, fumbles the ball out of bounds. But Newberry will keep possession at the Lenore Rhine 49-yard line. Should be enough for the Indian first down. He's got a, he's a determined runner. Keeps those legs moving, and he's impressed me so far. 27 yards on five carries for Acker. Terrence Mungro, number 27, looks like he may be injured. He's going to stay in there, but Acker ran over Mungro, and he took another shot trying to fight off a block, and the Indians are really breaking tackles, and they're moving the football on this, this drive. Five minutes and 14 seconds to go. In the uh, first quarter, Clint Scales breaks a tackle. Slithers by a Bear defender inside the 40, down to Lenorine 37, and another Newberry first down, and the Indians running the ball with confidence right now. And again, the Bear line not really getting a lot of penetration, and again, the running backs just shedding tackles and getting through there. Marcus Wall may have saved a touchdown. That's their third first down in this possession, their fourth so far in the game. They have the ball at the Lenorine 37 yard line after starting this possession at their own 28 yard line. And they're not playing like a team three and six. They're playing like they're going somewhere else after the season's over. Jeff, they don't have anything to lose. Blakeney, a little play action fake, rolling to the wide side of the field. That's the left throwing deep downfield and overthrows his intended receiver down at about the 15 yard line. That pass was intended for David Weber, and he was wide open. He just overthrew him. It'll bring up second and 10 at the 36-yard line. Good time to call a pass on first down when you've run the football up and down the field for 30 yards and knocked the Bears off the line of scrimmage. And the tight end turned Marcus Wall around, Jeff. Marcus, as a defensive back, you're not supposed to turn your back. 
He turned him around there on the corner pattern, and the quarterback just overshot him. So Mark, it's second and 10 at the 36-yard line. Clink scales and Acker behind uh, the quarterback, and he's going to option it himself. Now pitches out here to Acker, and it's covered very well. Ball popped out of there, and maybe Lenore Ryan recovered. The defensive hit, I think, was made by Brian Foster over there, and Newberry keeps possession. Or no, they don't. Lenore Ryan has recovered at the 35-yard line. Foster with the hit over there, and the Bears get possession of the football, recovering it right in front of the Bears' sideline. Blakely hit Acker. It wasn't a pitch. It was more like a came out of a cannon, shot him, hit him right in the shoulder pad. Jeff popped up in the air, and there was Brian Foster with the turnover. So the Bears, with 4.26 to go in the first quarter, leading 3-0 takeover at their own 35 following the Indian fumble. They fake the pitch and give to Randolph Bowers out of that tailback slot. Randolph tripped up and dropped after gaining only a yard on the play. For Newberry College, the tackle was made by Michael White. It'll bring up second and let's give him two yards to the 37. Let's call it second down and eight yards to go. Randolph Bowers, two touchdowns last week against Mars Hill, 78 yards rushing on the season. Randolph with 418 yards and four touchdowns. And Newberry playing tough up front. Second and eight at the Bear 37-yard line. Lauren Dean backs out of there. The draw plate of ours, and they cover him well. Not much of a gain that time. It was Reggie Dees, the defensive tackle, that read it and made the tackle after a gain of only two yards to the 39. It'll bring up third and six for the Bears. Scott Walker is coming into the game for the Bears, and usually, Juju, that means something special. That means something deep. Jeff, Newberry gambling a lot on first and second down to try to stop the run. And Scotty Walker, there's nobody on him right now, ladies and gentlemen. Four wideouts for the Bears on 19. third and six at their own 39. He's going, he's open now. Lauren Dean under pressure, throws over the middle, going to be caught at the 50-yard line in a first down, uh, making the reception for Lenore Ryan is Mark Sanders. And how many times this year have we seen that little guy go over the middle and take the hit and make the catch? He's done it again at the Newberry 49. <laughs> Scott Walker playing the inside receiver, ran straight down the field, was open, but a good decision by Tommy Laurendine. He didn't want to go for the big play, Jeff. Just picked up the third down. Good pass and a good run by Sanders. Sanders and Damon are the wideouts at the Newberry 49-yard line, first and 10. Laurendine fakes the pitch, comes back to the center of the uh, field and with Baldner carrying the football, and he's got yardage uh, from the 49 down to the 45-yard line. That freshman out of where? Crystal River, Florida. You ought to get some passes to go down there as many times as we've promoted that place. The Chamber of Commerce ought to be nice to me if I go down to Crystal River next spring. Baldner, 185 yards this year. Here's the pitch back to Bowers, trying to go left. Drives it in there for about three or four down to the 41-yard line of Newberry. It's going to be short of what they need for a first down. Going to bring up third down and about a yard and a half or two yards for the Bears. We have two minutes and ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Bears lead it three to nothing. Jeff Newberry selling out on defense to stop the rush on first and second down. The Bears are being kind and not throwing the ball as much. Newberry playing man-to-man -man defense on the corners against those Bear wideouts, and again, they do the same. Pair of receivers on third down and two from the Newberry 41. Here's Baldner, first down, or close to it at about the Newberry 39-yard line. If they give him his forward progress, Juju, I believe he's got the first down at about the 38-yard line. And the spot is going to be so close. The officials, well, they step in now and say, yes, it is a first down for Lenore Ryan. That is the fifth bear first down here in the first quarter of the football game. Jeff, uh, when you look at Russ Baldner off in street clothes, he doesn't look 215 pounds, but he's well-stocked, well-built. Mark it at the uh, Newberry 38-yard line. Larndine, Larndine, little play action, setting up a screen back over the middle of the ball. There, he was tackled on the play. No interference is called. Chris Chrisley, the nose guard, just grabbed him by the leg and pulled him to the ground as Baldwin was uh, trying to reach the football to make the reception, and no flag goes down. Should have been a pass interference call. Ball was in the air. Was watching some film this past week, Jeff, of Chrisley in a game against, I think it was Mars Hill or Presbyterian a couple of weeks ago. Couldn't have been Presbyterian. It had to be Mars Hill. Chrisley, at one time, they were snapping on a punt. He grabbed the center and threw him off the line of scrimmage. That's how strong number 74 is. Second and 10 at the 38-yard line. Four receivers for Laurendine. With time, throwing. Jones has got it at the 20 and a first down. They 
Got it uh, open in the middle there, and Jones makes the reception. Kevin Beater, or excuse me, Reeder makes the tackle for uh, Newberry, and it's a first down for the Bears. End zone, Kenny Jones with another reception. He has 24 now, is third on the team behind Sanders and Harrison. Jeff Newberry, you cannot play the Bears man on man, and he just found a seam there, and Lauren Dean laid it in perfect. Lardine, five of seven for 76 yards, I believe, Frank showed me there. Here's Bowers trying to run left, and they'll stack him after perhaps uh, no gain on the play. Uh, with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter, Lenore Ryan leading 3 nothing. We'll probably have time for a play or two here before the quarter's over. Fast-moving quarter at that. We kicked off at 7, and it's only taken us about 20 minutes to get to this point. Thank goodness. So the ball's been... Kept in play quite a bit here. A pair of wide receivers on second and long for the Bears in Newberry territory. Lauren Dean backs out of there. Play action fake, throwing. Going to be caught by Gilmore. He's got uh, first down yardage inside the 10 down to the five yard line. And the Bears will have first down and goal to go with seven seconds to go in the first quarter. We may not get another playoff if they set the chains here. And they do. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Lenore Ryan 3, Newberry nothing. This is Lenore Ryan College Cable Sports Network. Six Tire Centers are your complete automotive service centers. Shocks and struts, computer balance, alignment, brake service, air conditioning. We do it all. Six features BF Goodrich tires, including the radial TA. Distinct appearance, proven performance, and built to take on the road. Plus, the all-terrain TA, built to be tough on the trail and smooth on the road. Check out SIGS for Western Wheels, hot mags to customize any car or truck. See SIGS, Lower Springs Road, and Downtown Hickory. Dave Lennox. Since 1895, new ideas in heating and cooling. Get up to a $300 rebate or 12-month 0% financing on selected high-efficiency Lennox products. Call your independent Lennox dealer. Hickory Sheet Metal has been providing expert installation and quality service for over 60 years. Call Hickory Sheet Metal today. Attaboy, Dave. Hey, amigos! Have you been to El Tio's Mexican Cantina? They use award-winning recipes to make my Mexican favorites. El Tio's even gives you a break for lunch. You can get a taco, an enchilada, a burrito, even a Mexican salad, all for three forty-five each. Or you can order from their fabuloso dinner menu. Hey, amigos, El Tio's, right across the border at Springs Road and Sandy Ridge Road, Hickory. As host of a great party, you want to make sure your friends have a real good time. But you also want to make sure they get home safely. That's why Beer Drinkers of America reminds you to party smart. As the party winds down, a smart host closes the bar, offers his friends non-alcoholic beverages, and serves a fresh round of snacks. A smart host also keeps his eye on his guests and doesn't let anyone attempt to drive home who shouldn't. Be smart. Make yours a party everyone will remember. Well, this time they had someone in motion. Illegal shift is the signal by the referee, and Lenore Ryan will have it back out at the 10-yard line, so it'll be first and goal to go from the 10-yard line for the Bears. The Bears got the ball on the 34 a few moments ago, taking it down the field after a fumble recovery by Brian Foster. First and goal to go from the 10-yard line. They send Kenny Jones in motion to the right, going to pitch it to Bowers, trying to get outside. Now cuts it up in there, and they'll drop him at about the 7-yard line. Newberry gives up yardage consistently through the, between the 20-yard lines, but you get down inside the 10, and they get tough. The Bears were here earlier and had to settle for a field goal that uh, went 24 yards by Richie Mallard, and uh, they're looking now at second down and goal to go from the 8-yard line just underway in the second quarter. One of the reasons is because they get such fine line play from Deese and Chris Lee. Jeff, this defense reminds me of the Bears' defense. It gives up a lot of yards, but does not give up the big play. Baldner and Bowers behind uh, Lauren Dean. Wells in motion. This is Bowers tripped up at about the four-yard line, flying on the play after the play was over. So hold everything. The officials are conferring down there. Here's the holding penalty coming up against the Bears. Well, the Bears had first and goal at the five. They had a procedure penalty. They put it out at the 10. And now John Perry's got to be shaking his head over there, Juju, a second penalty since they had first and goal at the five. The Bears continue to try to go with that sweep. 
the backside weak side sweep and evidently they've noticed something they fought Jeff coming into the game that Newberry's ends and some of their players on defense did not have the overall team speed they thought against the Bear offense in the matchup department. But so far, Newberry's defense has played well, but they've been hurt by the pass. One of the reasons is they're selling out on the run. Second and goal to go at the 17-yard line following the Bears' second penalty since they had first and goal at the five. Jones in motion to the left side. Laurentine rolling left. Tommy under time, has some time, throws into the end zone. It's gonna be incomplete. And Newberry now looking at third down and uh, 17 on the defense. Knows that they hold the Bears here. They'll probably force Lenorine to try a field goal. Tommy was rushed that time. and If Tommy does have a small weakness, Jeff, it is him throwing to his left. Because he has to rotate his body and turn obviously naturally. He had Kevin Gilmore on the backside post open. Let's see if the Bears go to the tight end again. Scott Walker in there, man-man coverage in the secondary. Only one man set behind Laurentine, and he's going out for a pass as well. That was Ballner over the middle, making the reception for Lenore Ryan is Scott Walker for the touchdown. They flooded the field with the receiver. Somebody had to be open, and it was Walker. And he beat ma his man like a rented mule for the quick post across the middle. You can't play a guy that runs a 4-2-40 man-man. Third and goal from the 17, and Walker and Lauren Dean connect for a bear touchdown, and Lenore Ryan will see Mallard come on to try to make it 10 to nothing with 13.32 to go in the first half of the football game. There's the spot. The kick's on the way, and the Bears have got a 10 nothing lead. Timeout on the field. This is Lenore Ryan College football on the Lenore Ryan College Cable Sports Network. With the new spirit at your Dodge dealer, finding an affordable sports car won't give you the blues. CR89 Daytona. Dodge quality. Sports suspension. The performance of a 2.5-liter fuel-injected engine. All for just $97.34. After all, why should you get the blues when all you really want is a great deal? Galaxy at six locations in the Catawba Valley to serve you. It hasn't been too many years since Charlotte was a much simpler place. What was once a quiet town has grown into a confident city, and the opportunities for growth will continue to challenge us. It'll take a respect for the past and our very best efforts to responsibly shape our future. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we're proud to share these challenges. And in the process, we promise to send our best to you. Some business supply stores will try to sell you everything, including not at white business machines. Our business is copiers, typewriters, and calculators. That's it. And we have seven factory trained service technicians just a beep away. See the Sharp SF8500 modular copier, a user-friendly copier that makes any copying job push-button easy. Auto exposure and zoom, color, and 30 copies a minute are standard. Add attachments as you grow. See the Sharp SF8500 at White Business Machines of Hickory. Bears leading 10 nothing, converting a third down and 16, or third down and goal from the 17 for a touchdown. Newberry waiting on the kick, and here we go. Making the return again is uh, Epps. Flags all over the place as he's going to be hit by the Bear defense and dropped at the 24-yard line. Number 42 is Dan Schlintz. Made the tackle. The man who had the touchdown last week called back and talked to John Perry this week, and turns out Dan Schlintz with a penalty flag. Dan Schlintz is a comedian. Oh, really? Yes. So I was right when I said no Larry Schlintz. Let me uh, let me correct my spot. Instead of the 24, it's the 19, and now here's the penalty. And he'll go back to the 9-yard line, and the Indians are going to be backed up with 13.25 to go 
in the first half, and Lenorine dominating not only the scoreboard, but the first quarter statistics reveal that as well. Dewberry's been able to rush the ball. They've had 49 yards, 50 yards rushing. The Bears, 125 yards total offense, seven first downs in the first quarter. As they go on first down from their own nine yard line, and they struggle in there for perhaps a yard or two, Acker, the ball carrier, as uh, he gets it over the 10 out to the, about the 12 yard line, it'll be second down at seven yards to go for the Indians. One of those little things that John Perry talks about, field position, making the opposition have to drive the ball the length of the field. Turns out that's what happens this time. A couple of substitutions in for Lenore Ryan. This is Clink Scales running the football this time, and he's tripped up with the Bear defense as he gets over the 15, out to about the 18-yard line, and the Indians are going to be looking at third down and about a yard. Third and short at their own 18-yard line. They'd like to convert here, Juju. They need just a little bit of momentum. They're trailing Lenore in 10-0 at the 12-minute, 35-second mark. Still early. They have moved the ball. They've had one turnover. We mentioned the changes. The linebacker, Bob Lofton, back in after a couple of weeks. He's had a knee problem. And Elgin Blue, number 47, in there for Charlie Wallace. Blakely looking over the Bear defense on third and a yard. They sent a man in motion back to the left side, and here's the, the quarterback going to keep it. He's got the first down as he wedges over the 20, out to about the 21 or 2-yard line. Elgin Blue made the tackle for the Bears, got some help from uh, Brian Foster, and it will be a first down for Newberry. They moved the ball with some success, but on their first possession, they uh, were finally stopped after getting a first down. They fumbled away their second possession, and now they've just picked up their fifth first down of the first half. 12 minutes to go, and the clock moving along here in the first half of the football game. The Bears leading by a score of 10-0. Here's the pitch back to Acker trying to get to the corner. The Bears string him out and push him out of bounds somewhere in the vicinity of the 25 or 26-yard line. One of the reasons why New Bears is going to want to still control the football, they want to keep the Bear offense off the field. We heard their coach before the game say the best way to control Lenore Ryan is to control the football yourself. Jeff. Scott Walker back in, who just caught the touchdown pass, playing cornerback now for the Bears, the two-way performer. Had a fine game against Newberry last year, returned a long punt and a long kickoff back, and has a touchdown this year against the Indians. Acker, 33 yards on seven carries for the Indians as Blakely brings them up to the line of scrimmage. They send a man in motion, that's Weber, and here they come back, uh, the quarterback, wanting to keep it himself, running the football, 30. Cuts back and he's dropped it about the 34 yard line. It will be enough for the Indian first down. I think that was a busted play. He turned out of there and looked like he wanted to hand the ball to somebody and there wasn't anyone there. No, it was a pass play because the tight end was dragging across the middle. Number 83, Gary Green, or and Dave Weber was coming across the middle. And Blakely just saw some room and the Bear defensive end, Jeff, got caught up inside looking for the run. Now enabled the quarterback to get on the corner and pick up the first down. And a good drive now by the Indians. Bears lead 10-0 as Newberry starts this one at their own 34-yard line. The quarterback going to give it in a good hole. 40 out to the 42-yard line. Clink scales the ball carrier that time as the Indians pick up about 7 or 8 on the ball uh, being run that time by Clink scales. The senior out of Anderson, South Carolina. And it'll be second down in a yard. And let's see what Gary Small and his staff will like to do here on second and short yardage. They haven't had that luxury very much tonight. The Bear defense not fooling anybody. Newberry's moved the ball in the middle of the field. It's just they bogged down once they've got down to the 20 and the 30. Second and a yard at their own 44. Well, that time they get Acker and they drop him. The Bears cover him well. Good defensive surge for the Bears, and it's uh, no gain on the play. Perhaps a loss. Mike Cohe led the charge for the Bears. And he's got to bring up third down in the yard at the 44-yard line. It is good that Bob Lofton, the sophomore linebacker out of Georgia, Gainesville, Georgia, is back in there after calcium deposit on his right knee, Jeff. It's still bothering him, but he says he's ready to go. He's got good range of motion. And the Bear defense now, third and short. Again, the offense, the Veer offense for Newberry, just pounds it at you. Well, they got the first down and more. Acker breaks the tackle in Lenora in territory inside the 45, down to the 41-yard line, and Newberry comes up with a third down conversion to keep their possession alive on a fine run by Acker, who's now probably close to 50 yards on the night. The stat sheet says Acker's 5'10", 192 pounds, and a freshman, if he's 5'10", you're 6'8". Nine carries, 49 yards. I knew he was close to 15. Frank Huffman 
says he's a yard short of that. Nine he's, minutes to go in the first half. The Bears up 10 nothing. He's out of West Side, South Carolina, similar to Jeff Stevie Riggins for Presbyterian. Played for Ted Luckadoo, who used to be the coach at High Brighton High School in Lenore. Here's the uh, running play, and uh, Clink scales inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. Toby Bratton of the Bears makes the tackle. 8.40 to go in the first half. The Bears up 10 nothing, but Newberry moving the ball well. Started their own nine-yard line, and this market at the Newberry 39 now. Suck it down, and eight yards to go. They need some points on this drive. Get back in the game, it would be awfully tough in terms of momentum-wise and the way they feel about themselves that they come up with no points after moving the football pretty good here in the first half. Padgett and Weber both go wide to the left side as the quarterback go to option it down the line, sticks it in the gut of clink scales, and he dives forward for a few yards down to the 36-yard line. I'll tell you, he, it's almost like a collision when he gets ready to hand it off down there. It's almost like he and the running back are running together. That's how close those handoffs are. That's the way it's supposed to be on the option, and Blakely coming down the line of scrimmage, Jeff, you want to get a good line. You don't want to be in your backfield when you hand the ball off. You want to be running a straight line or even moving forward, and they're getting the good handoff right now at the point of attack. Third and five at the Bear 36-yard line. They go in a shotgun. Out of the shotgun. They sent Acker in motion, and now Blakeney rolling left, throwing, going to be caught by Acker out of the backfield for a first down at the 26-yard line of Lenore Ryan. And Newberry moving the ball with a little bit of imagination in this possession, comes up with a first down at the Bear 26. Nothing fancy there. Acker out of the backfield in motion, just ran out into the flat. A square out of about six yards, and Blakely hit him, and it's tough to guard somebody, Jeff, a linebacker, if you're playing in the middle, and the running back just runs to the corner, and just a good play, third down conversion picked up by the Indians. Fair running back still there, and this is Acker once again, 25, cuts it up down to the 22-yard line before the Bears can gang tackle him there. Newberry eating up some time as well. They've had the football for almost seven minutes in this possession. They started at their own nine-yard line, and now they have second down and uh, six yards to go at the Bear 27, excuse me, the Bear 23, 22-yard uh, line. Ten carries, 53 yards now for Acker, and they're not doing anything fancy. It's what the Bear defense wants to do, force you to drive the ball all the way down the field, and Newberry's done that, Jeff. They are four of five now, third out Come conversion. Ball, and the Bears have recovered. That time, oh. the quarterback... And uh, the ball carrier, clink scales run together. I'm not sure. I think Toby Bratton got the fumble recovery for the Bears. And that's the second turnover for Newberry, the second fumble for them tonight. And it stops a nice drive that they had going that had really consumed some yardage and time. Second time. The strategy on, off, on defense for Lenore Ryan force you to drive the ball down the field. They did. Second time tonight, the strategies worked. Bears take over at their own 22-yard line. Six minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half, and they enjoy a 10-0 lead as they're going to give it to Walter Greer, and Walter breaks a tackle, gets over the 25, out to the 29-yard line as uh, it'll be a gain of about seven yards on the play. It'll be second and three for Lenore Ryan. Boy, that is tough for your confidence if you're the Indians. You've moved the ball twice down the field, Jeff, against the Bear defense and come up with zero points, two turnovers. We mentioned the times Newberry's lost this year. They've laid the ball on the ground. Well, they've done it twice here and stopped good scoring threats uh, both times they've done it. Lauren Dean hands off to Crawford. He ran into the back of Greer that time and slips and falls, may have lost a yard, back to the 28-yard line. And the Bears will be looking at about third and four now with five minutes and 40 seconds to go in the half as they lead 10-0. Been surprised that the Bears have not thrown the ball on first or second down as much because Newberry is really playing the run, Jeff. Early downs, and we've seen Scott Walker and a couple of other receivers open in the secondary. This is a passing situation. Three wide receivers, one running back. Bears have scored on their first two possessions. Lauren Dean, sideline pass, going to be caught by Jones. He can't break the tackle. It will be enough for the first down, however, at the 34-yard line. And that keeps the possession alive with five minutes and nine seconds to go in the first half. As Lenore Ryan leading 10-0, got a field goal on their first possession, got a touchdown on their uh, second possession, and the Bears come up with a big third down play to keep their possession alive there. Get a feeling Lenore Ryan's not any fun unless you make a third down conversion. Well, they've had some success at that already tonight. 
Mark it at the 34-yard line. Lauren Dean fakes the pitch, comes back to Crawford, and a good defensive play charging in there for Newberry was the defensive end, Michael White, who nobody blocked him. He had a clear shot at Crawford and dropped him for a loss back at the 31-yard line. Jeff, one of the things Newberry's doing defensively, their tackles, Chrisley and Deese, they're pinching, or like some of the old professional teams, they're pointing into the center. You could see it, and they're forcing the Bears to go outside, and they're just playing the run awfully well. Four receivers on second and 13 at the 20, or excuse me, the 31-yard uh, line. Barndine deep over the middle. Sam Wells can't make the play, or check that, Sanders can't make the play at the Newberry 35-yard line. And he was open if they could have connected on the pass play. That might have went all the way. Again, Turned him around. He, he did. And, and Lauren Dean got good protection again. The Bears aren't doing much in terms of being fancy passing the ball, Jeff. Newberry again playing man-man. The Bear receiver's awfully quick, and they're just running that time a straight fly pattern. Scott Walker's in there. Single coverage over on the corner. Let's see if the Bears go to the speedster. Yes, they are. Now they put Greer in motion as well. They're Lawrence, going to him. Lauren Dean, 12 of 8, going over the middle. Whoa! He can't make the catch at midfield. His re defender had fallen down on the play, and all he had to do was make the catch. Kelvin Reeder, the cornerback, had fallen down, and that might have been six for the Bears. For the first time tonight, with 3.59 to go in the half, the Bears are going to punt it away as Mallard comes on to do the punting. Scotty Walker would have still been running. That would have been a 71-yard touchdown pass. The guy fell down and Scotty would have outran. Jeff, I can't believe it. Again, single coverage, and Walker had his man beat by 10 yards. It's a good snap. Newberry coming after Mallard, and he hits a floater up here that uh, they're going to run away from, and the Bears will cover it without a return. Brian Carlo just lets it uh, roll dead, and the Bears cover it at the Newberry 31-yard line. The Indians will have possession there with 3.47 to go in the first half of the football game. Lenoreite on top 10-0. New Bears got to change something defensively. Get the, you get the feeling that if the Bears want to throw the ball at any time they can tonight. They've had the success. They, the only time they haven't been successful is when they've dropped them themselves. Or and like Walker did on that one a moment ago. They've had receivers open all night in the secondary. Newberry starts at their own 31-yard line. Here's the reverse, and it's fumbled. And then the Bears cover him back there. Sean Moultrie, the young man who was... Uh, set up for the reverse and he couldn't hold on to it and uh, it's another mistake for the Indians they lose yardage back to about the 21 yard line it's not their night there must be a flag on the play as well and they're pointing at Newberry perhaps a uh, holding call or something here's the official coming out and we get a hold signal against Newberry I would suspect the Bears would refuse it though doesn't go break the theory yet doesn't break the streak we haven't had many penalties at all tonight. I know what right. you're leading into. Going into tonight's game, folks, if you haven't heard already, just by chance. Juju's had his soapbox <laughs> up for ever since about the third game of the season on this subject, so go right ahead. Lenore Ryan, Sports Information Director Joe Smith, checking the stats this, this week and this year. The opposition has thrown 197 passes against the Lenore Ryan defense, and there has been not one holding call on a pass. That time it was on a run but they lost 10 yards, eight yards. Not quite, it's second at 16 back at the 22-yard uh, line. Here's the quarterback, Blakely backing up over the middle, overthrows, almost, is it uh, incomplete? Uh, Marcus Wall had it in and out of his hand. He made a pretty good act there trying to make it look like he'd intercepted it. But Newberry will be looking at third down at about 16 yards to go. I don't know what it is, that side of the field is pointing towards the cemetery, which is right next here to Sessler Field. Strange place to have a cemetery. Well, this is not a very well-lit field either uh, here at Newberry, uh, not to be critical of the folks. They've been very hospitable to us, but down in the in that particular end of the field, down next to the cemetery, it's kind of dark. <laughs> I don't know if there's uh, anything ironic about that or not. Three I, minutes and ten seconds to go in the half. I bet the school here has a heck of a time during Halloween. Blakely will back out of there on third and 16. Pumps is hit as he throws, and the pass is going to be incomplete. They were trying to set up a screen pass over there, and Acker was the intended receiver, and the Bears 
uh, defense put some pressure on the quarterback. I believe it was Eric Boston that got in there and hit him just as he released the football. And now Newberry will have to punt it away. Kevin Black comes on to do the punting. Three minutes and four seconds to go. Second quarter, Lenore Ryan leads 10-0. Should get good field position. A high floating kick as it'll be caught at the 49-yard line. Kind of risky. Scott Walker makes the reception. We do have a penalty flag down on the play. They didn't give him the appropriate amount of yardage to make the catch, I don't think. That could be the penalty. Here's the official signal. Interference, Newberry, and Lenore Ryan will get some yardage tacked on to this. Newberry fans don't think it's a correct call, but the rule says you have to give him three feet or three yards. I never. I thought it was one yard. Well, three feet makes one yard, doesn't it? Yes. Maybe, maybe that's what I was trying to get at. Only a five-yard penalty, but Lenore Ryan has possession at the Newberry 46-yard line with two minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Laurendine throwing. This is uh, Sanders breaking some tackles, stays on his feet, gets a couple of yards to the 44-yard line. Do you see number 74, Steve Davidson, the 305-pound freshman out there? He ran into Mark Sanders. Fortunately, Mark didn't go down, kind of hid behind the big guy, and then almost broke it to the corner. Laurendine fumbled the snap that time, Jeff, and had a problem getting the ball over there. If you have a chance, look at Newberry's defensive tackles. Now they're pointing in towards the Bears in terms of center Steve Swope. They want the Bears, they don't want the Bears to run up inside. Look at number 95 and number 58. Yeah, they come at you at an angle. Laurendine optioning down the line, gonna pitch it back, cutting in there for some yardage, and he may be gone. That's Sam Wells inside the 30 down to the 29 yard line of the Indians. And a Lenorine first down. Tommy Laurendine will be the first man to tell you he's not an option quarterback, but when you have the defensive tackle selling out inside Jeff and pinching the line of scrimmage, the end is gonna be open and the ends come down hard. Laurendine pitches it and Sam Wells is a great runner on the option. Bowers back in there with Ballner in front of him in the backfield behind Laurendine now. Mark it at the 30-yard line of the Indians. Laurendine, the delay, this is Bowers up the middle, breaks a tackle on his feet inside the 25, down to the 22-yard uh, line as we work down to a minute and 35 seconds and the clock moving along here in the first half. The Bears enjoying a 10-0 lead. And we'd like to come up with something else here before halftime. See if the Bears go up top. They've been successful tonight. I'm still surprised that Newberry plays man on man in the secondary. Lenorine scored on their first two possessions of the game, got a field goal out of Mallard, and then a third and 17 pass from Lauren Dean to uh, Walker for the touchdown. Over the middle, this is uh, going to be caught inside the 10 yard line, making the reception for Lenorine was John Gilbert. And it's going to be a first down for the Bears inside the 10 at the nine yard line. With one minute and one second to go, in the uh, first half of the football game. Gilbert is a junior, 6'3", 200, back up tight end to Rex Harrison, who's not playing tonight. Jeff, second catch of the season. Out of Lakeland, Florida. First and goal at the nine. Bowers running, cuts back nicely down to the three-yard line. And the Bears with the seconds ticking off the clock, only 45 seconds to go. Lauren Dean runs in there and will take the timeout. We'll take a break. You're watching Lenore Ryan football on Catawba Valley Cable TV. This is Lenore Ryan College Cable Sports Network. Give me when you best shot. 